Hey YouTube, as promised, uh, we're going to do a little bit with Glow in the Dark today. Um, for this project, you're going to need, obviously, something to apply the Glow in the Dark powder and resin to. Um, epoxy. I'm using a two-part Loctite brand epoxy. Uh, it's supposed to be a 60-minute cure time. There is a five-minute cure time. Everybody says stay away from that until you really know what you're doing. Uh, this setup is just too quick. Um, you're going to need glow powder. For this, I'm using Glow Inks V10 uh, Ultra Green. You're going to need something to, to mix your powder and your epoxy together. And I'm using this small piece of uh, <clears throat> template plastic that I picked up at Michael's in the quilting section. Um, it's just something to protect the tabletop. So, first thing we're going to need to do is open up our little bag of powder. Kind of disappointed with Glow Ink. I would you know, maybe a Ziploc bag of some sort. So we're going to open it up. And you only need as much epoxy as you have, or I'm sorry, as much powder as you have epoxy. Since we're only going to be using a small amount, I'm only going to dish out a small amount of the powder for now. Uh, the best I could come up with was to fold the top back over itself and insert it into another small Ziploc bag, um, maybe a jar at some point in the future. I'll put that aside. I'm gonna move these two flashlights out. We'll talk about well, actually let's talk about those now. For the uh, the first project, I've drilled three small holes in the, the top of this Phoenix L1D. Um, we're going to put some epoxy in there and smooth it over, see how that is. The second one is actually pretty cool. We're going to take this Surefire E1E that normally I have the KL1 LED head on. Uh, we're going to use the standard incandescent head and put a little epoxy around the bulb. And by epoxy, I mean, of course, epoxy with the glow glow powder in it. We're going to put it around the bulb. What that'll do is it will charge the glow powder when it's on and should give us a nice glow around the bulb when it's off. Um, I've seen this mod a couple times on candle power forms and it looks pretty slick. So we'll start with those two projects and see where it takes us. I guess the first thing we want to do is mix up a little epoxy. I'm just going to mix maybe five drops of each together. We'll start from there. Okay, the, uh, the, this side of it is pretty thick, so those weren't really drops. Hopefully this is a little better. Nope. Pretty viscous. There's one. Two. Call that three. Four. And a little extra for five. Okay, now we're going to take our mixing stick. This is just a, uh, a hobby sculpting tool. I've used this for years and years and years building models, mixing uh, milliput and green stuff together. I'm not a very good sculptor, but of course when you build models and whatnot, you of course collect these tools. Okay, and there's a little impurity there. Something I used a pin vise to drill the tops of those epoxy tops. I know this has got to be a really entertaining video, doesn't it? Mixing epoxy. Um, I will skip forward through the drying process. It won't make you watch that. Okay, our epoxy is mixed. Now we're going to Separate a little bit of epoxy and figure out how to mix in the glow powder. Maybe we'll just scoop. A 
it's not working very well. Um, in the future, I think I would just scoop directly into the epoxy rather than laying the powder out on the table first. So the, uh, the most common directions on candle power forms were mix until it's almost too much. Um, it kind of feels like we're approaching that stage. Uh, I think it could probably stand another little scoop though. Maybe two, that was kind of small. All right, having never done it before, I'm gonna call, call it done at this stage. Zoom in a little bit here. So as you can see, we are pretty gritty. It's still not runny, but liquidy. So we're gonna take the epoxy and apply it to the holes. And at this point, I'm not too concerned about spillover. I'm really concerned about filling the hole as best as I can. We can always take care of the spillage with a little buffing after we're done. Okay, that middle one needs a little more attention. Okay, holes are filled. We've got a little epoxy uh, mixed with the powder around it. I'm gonna try to work on that a little bit later after it sets up a bit. I'll set that aside for now. Okay, so our epoxy that we have left, I'm gonna scrape that up. Now, I'm not so sure the little spatula tip is the best application tool for this, but uh, it's what I've got handy. So, start, give you a close up of the bulb. Um, if I was really concerned about this, I'd take an alcohol pad and wipe my fingerprints off of it. Since this is just practice, and I'm kind of uh, eager to get this project up and running, see how it is. What we're gonna end up doing is putting the epoxy around this black part of the bulb, um, maybe up onto the, the very top of it, actually touching the bulb. Um, I wanna avoid that as much as possible, I think. So, grab the bulb with my trusty Leatherman juice pliers and apply. Now, I'm obviously gonna need more epoxy, which means more glow powder. Now, unfortunately, we're doing this all by sight and feel, so you know, one one micro batch is going to be slightly different than the next. Hopefully, everything works out. I'll just a touch more epoxy. I think there we go. Um, at some point in the future, it would be nice to to actually come up with ratios for you guys. I'm going to zoom back out, keep this in frame. Um, I'm having a little hard time keeping it in frame and actually doing the work, trying to see around my microphone. Okay, that's looking pretty good. 
got a lot more on the bulb than I had intended to, but I think we'll be all right. So the epoxy, even though it's it's pretty gummy with uh, with the powder in it, it, it does still flow. All right, so let's turn our attention back to the Phoenix, and we'll try to even out those holes a bit. I'm going to just take a piece of index card, cut a strip, and we'll fold that in half, give me a nice edge, try to work on that a bit more. While the epoxy is wet, it's a lot easier to clean up, so I might as well do as much of that as I can. Use it like a razor blade, scrape across the top, pull up any excess. Okay, that's actually looking pretty good. Um, it's going to need a little bit of paper to, to complete. I'm fine with doing that after the fact. So, I'm going to set these aside and we will return in approximately an hour. Alright guys, we're back. Um, it's been an hour, hour and a half since since we filled the holes with the epoxy and glow powder and uh, I've already put the, the bulb in the, the head on the Surefire. I just wanted to make sure that everything worked before we got going here. Um, so let's uh, turn off the lights and see what happens. All right, so I consider uh, both experiments to be a success. I've also, uh, just with the little extra epoxy I scraped up, filled in the thumb stud screws on this large griptilian. Um, I don't ever intend on taking the thumb studs out, and to be honest, the epoxy could probably be popped out of there with a little heat. Um, I'm thinking for the next go around I'm going to try an actual casting epoxy. Maybe we'll fill in some, some small spaces on uh, this pocket clip doesn't have one, but uh, not necessarily on this knife, but on the pocket clip there's the, uh, the slot cut out or you know whatever. Um, so hopefully you guys have had your curiosity piqued by this. Again, this was glow powder from Glow Ink. This is the V10. Uh, unfortunately, it only comes in green. There are other colors. They don't glow as long or as brightly. Um, all right. Thanks, guys. Have a good night.